Okay guys, Gavin from The Car Tune Company. So this is uh, the second video in my series on aftermarket ECUs. We're eventually going to get to wiring up the ECU and setting it up. And I'm attempting to do uh, both the, the wiring side of it and the setup with the laptop. So in this video, I'm going to go through each of these ECUs and explain why I chose them for some different jobs. Starting off, Atom 2. These are a great little ECU, really well priced. It's not one I use a lot of because I tend to favour the monsoon, which I'll come to in a moment. Plastic body, tiny wee ECU, so it fits in some amazingly small places. I used one recently on a, on a jet boat, it was a V6 Mitsubishi. Uh, had a distributor in it, so we only needed one ignition output, so that was great. The other ignition outputs could have used for other other things. I ran, the, the engine had a map sensor on it, so a factory Mitsubishi map sensor, so I didn't need a map sensor. I wanted an output, uh, I didn't need an output for a fan as such. I needed a fuel pump output, I didn't need too many digital inputs, and I group fired the injectors, so that was a great use of the, the Atom. Still got four injector and four ignition, so that's pretty good. So if you're running a little four AGE, that's a great ECU. But it will do your V8s. I did the, the highest van video that's on, on here. I've got a full set of instructions uh, that I did to the, for the customer, and I used an Atom. I had one in stock. The customer specifically wanted an Atom, and I couldn't talk them out of it, even though the, the price difference to a monsoon was very little. And it was going to do the job. And it came up really well. So that's the... The Atom, or Atom 2. Uh, also, they, there, was a, there was an Atom 1, which had a different plug in the header. So, the Atom 2 has got the same plug as the A plug of all the other ECUs. Uh, two temperatures. I think they've only got one digital. So, real base model, but still up to the job for a lot of, it, a lot of vehicles. Often, instead of an Atom, I will uh, step up before I get there. The Atom is going to need a map sensor of some sort, so we can supply them as well. So you've got, after the Atom is the Monsoon, and I think these are great value for money. They're like a, an Atom on steroids. They've got a couple more auxiliary outputs. They've got a built-in map sensor. Same small body, so they're tiny. Look, isn't that a cutie? So I think they're really good value for money. So Monsoon recently, oh, SR20DE, had a distributor again, but I wanted a few extra outputs, so that's going to be perfect for the job. Four, four injection, four injectors, uh, and uh, running that distributor, and later on if they want to upgrade two uh, individual coils on the SR, that's going to be just perfect for that job. So a real fantastic little ECU. So this Monsoon is actually getting unlocked today and sent off to a customer. It's going to go on an early 1UZ, so even though it's 8 cylinders, uh, we're going to group the injectors together. Uh, it's going to run the factory ignition for the, the two coils, so that's, that's just fine. And I've made up a little kit for him. This is his kit over here. So I have a set of injector plugs, so brand new connectors for the injectors. TPS plug and a water temp sensor, so at no point running a new ECU again with an old temp sensor. Two coil plugs, and cam angle sensor plug and a crank angle sensor plug, and an air temp. It's got a two and a half meter loom. Oil pressure sensor, because he's going to be running uh, the gauge, the oil pressure gauge from the link, and a two channel igniter to run the factory coils. That vehicle is actually going to be an auto as well, so he's got a 20 series ECU to be wired as an ECT, and I've supplied instructions on that. So that's going to be a neat little job for that monsoon. It's pretty well priced, and I think my wiring that I do, I will actually base it on uh, that monsoon. I think it's going to do what I need it to do, so it's a great choice. So I think that's where I'm going to go. Haven't completely decided yet. The next one is a storm. 
Oh, it's a virgin. Hasn't been opened yet. So there was an older storm. Um, well, there were G4 storms, and then there was a, a blue one, I believe, which only had a single plug. So there's a, still a few of those floating around. Just turn off my compressor. So there's a few of the single plug storms floating around. Uh, but the, the new storm black, uh, when there was a bit of a change around, and they were a bit of a scaled down extreme. So you, what you used to get is an extreme, not quite, but it came a storm. So eight injectors, eight ignition, eight auxiliary outputs, no drive by wire, but a fantastic ECU. Uh, I did a Nissan Patrol with one of these a little while ago, uh, running an LS1, and it slipped in really nicely. I ran the factory four wire stepper motor, had an ECU hold, I had a fan and a fuel pump output, and a taco output. That was everything. It did everything I needed it to do. So with the storm on the Safari, the GU, uh, I chose it because it had enough outputs for, to run the LS1, but I wanted some mixture control, some, a wide band. So I actually added a can lambda to it. Now that was, uh, enabled me to have wide band mixture. The vehicle is actually getting LPG as well. So I was talking to the man for the LPG just recently and having proper control, and it meant when I set it up, when I could tune it, I could change just the targets and it would change the mixture without having to redo the map each time. I just had to change the lambda targets. Well, that was a great option for that. I did have to compromise on the check light, uh, but there is a light on the ECU that would display check codes anyway. So I was fine with making that compromise using the storm. There was also a, a, another wiring job I did on a surf. 1UZ, early 1UZ, factory stepper again, ECU hold, and it was running an auto. So we wired that in with an aftermarket trans controller to run the auto. Um, oh, and actually the hot rod I did, the 47 Ford hot rod. We went for a storm on that as well. Uh, 1UZ VVTi, so that was enough to run the VVTi, individual coils, individual, individual injectors, and enough outputs to do everything else I needed to do. And then the factory transmission was run by the factory ECU. I just whipped all the engine running stuff out of it. So that's the Storm, great ECU, and I'd still really consider that a, a, a beginner's ECU. No drive-by wire in it. A great option. So as we move up the range, there's another one around the Stormish, which is the Kerafune. That's a, a universal type, uh, well, it's a plug-in ECU to adapter looms that are available out of Japan. Haven't done a lot with it, it's quite high spec, and I, ha I have considered it for a couple of uh, piggyback jobs, and it would be ideal for that, because it's got quite high specs. After that, well if you want to, there's the, there's the Extreme and the Fury. They're kind of just different. I don't know if I'd rate one higher or, or lower. We're going to look at the Fury next anyway. So the Fury is a great, great unit with uh, internal wide beam, so I really like it for that. Did a little Datsun 1600 recently with an SR20 DET. So these have got uh, 8 injector and 6 ignition. So more than I needed for the SR, but it had that built-in wideband. So no having the external wideband unit. I was really happy with that one coming along. Uh, the car's actually at the panel beaters at the moment, so I haven't done a video on it yet. But I really like that internal wideband. I'm a great fan of uh, proper mixture control and, and, and proper widebands. Same A and B plug as the Storm and the Extreme and the Thunder, but the Thunder's got two extras. Got a couple of can channels in there. Lots of firepower in that Fury. Another job I've got one for, um, oh, the 2JZ. So great for your six cylinder turbo stuff. Uh, I've got a 2JZ in a, for customers doing in a 2011 Hilux. So we will be wiring that up at some stage using the, uh, using the Fury. Like this extreme. 
drive-by wire, which is also available in the Fury. The actual the 2JZ in the 2011 Hilux has got drive-by wire. So again, that Fury, built-in wideband, drive-by wire in there. It's the perfect ECU for that truck. So going up to the extreme, uh, just recently, Nissan VK VK56. Oh, I might be both a VK56 and a VK45. Drive-by wire throttle bodies. So the extreme was perfect. Eight cylinders, full sequential ignition, full sequential injection. Lots of logging. So the extreme was the perfect option for the job. And this one's actually going uh, away. It's going to be unlocked. It's going away for a customer with a 1UZ supercharged. And he happened to have some low impedance injectors. So it made a lot of sense. He already had the injectors to run the extreme. He also has got individual coils. So where I can, I run them uh, as individual coils. So the extreme was the perfect choice for that job. Before we get on with the thunder, I'm going to take this down. So before we get on to the thunder, we're going to discuss plugins. The plugins are a really high spec DCU, and they're great for a vehicle where the loom is in good order. Uh, had a S15 Sylvia, turbocharged, looms in great order, injectors in the standard place, manifold, intake manifold was the same, had a bigger turbo on it. So we added an air temp sensor, put a plug-in into it. I really want to put a key lambda over the top, I'm sure you'll get around to it. Uh, this one in, in here was actually uh, as a 300ZX plug-in, and there was a plug-in in the box until I plugged it in to a GU Patrol. So it had six cylinders, six cylinders. It had the right header plug, so that was real simple. But I did have to change some pins on that one, so not quite a normal way you'd use a plug-in, but it made a lot of sense. And it was very easy for me to do. Uh, now I've done the research on it. So... Uh, the plugins, I think outside the box a little bit. It meant I could use a, a plug-in to, to a different vehicle as such, but in the same model range, and it was quick and easy to do without having to rewire the whole car. And then, we have the Thunder. When I planned this, there was a Thunder in the box, but I sold it. Uh, so that job was actually a... Toyota Prado, and we went all out on it. We sat down, we spent an hour planning, going through everything, and I used the map in this Thunder, that's, it was a very similar setup to the 2003 Hilux I did with the 3UZ. And I used the Thunder in that, because I had the drive-by wire, air conditioning, and lots of things around the truck I wanted to control. And then when we crossed, went across to the Prado, I found I had even more things I wanted to control, so we did full air conditioning control. He wanted a uh, temperature sensor in the exhaust. He wanted an EGT. They've got a built-in, they've got two built-in EGTs. Uh, I was able to run lots of temperature inputs into it. But they've got four, but because we were running the standard ECU as an ECT, there was pull-ups in there, so I was able to fire the couple extras in there. This thing's got a heap of processing power. Four injector, oh, sorry, eight injector, eight ignition, and I think there's 16 auxiliaries going into that thing. Massive. Traction control, individual um, reluctor sensors, twin wideband. The, um, the Prado, we put the twin widebands in. The Hilux, 2003 Hilux, got the twin widebands, and the 2009 Hilux with the LS1. Got this. Factory stepper motor because it was a it actually had wasn't a drive by wire engine I purchased. So if I was going to do it again, I think I'd do a drive by wire instead. Uh, air conditioning control, warning for overheating, twin fan control. So there was a lot of power. The thunders are a great one, and I really like them. There's also a one for the direct injection, which I haven't really played with yet. 
there's some examples of, of ECUs that I've used uh, and why I've used them. Great lineup. If you choose the right ECU for your job, you're going to get great results and be happy with it for years to come. And then you've got to make sure it's wired properly. So we'll move on to that soon. Talk to you later.